this um, spaghetti thing sounds delicious. Yeah, funny that I'm eating spaghetti for lunch. I had spaghetti <laughs> with pasta for lunch as well. I also had some pasta. So. Oh, <laughs> I mean, for me, probably it's normal, but yeah, totally. I do like pasta you. here. Yeah, the, we, it would be a problem for Ricardo, I would say. No. Everyone had pasta for lunch. Did you? I had a bagel for breakfast. That's fair. So, uh, looks like the streaming's gonna start. Thank you, Allison. Yeah, no problem. Um, who should I make the host? I'm probably gonna drop off, but I'll be around if y'all need me. Uh, myself or Dimitri, either or. Dimitri, Dimitri, Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Right. Okay, we voted Dimitri. Dimitri is the host. <laughs> All right, well, Thank the is set up, so let me know if y'all need anything, but otherwise, have a good session. Thank you. Um, bye. Thank you. Okay, round two. <laughs> yeah, I see people still joining. Yeah. So maybe we give it to two minutes and you know, discussing past and. Definitely. Since you can't really join the room if you don't have link handy until the exact time, so. Right. Uh, where's the Etherpad? I can paste the link. I've got it almost here. I've got it. I'm sorry, I just, I just read the first uh, warming up question even if we are not starting yet, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. <laughs> if you were to write Ironic from scratch today, how would you write images on nodes? So what's your answer? Well, um, by experience, <laughs> I'd say like RAM disks. So not writing images directly on nodes, but just using images loaded on RAM. This is what uh, we used to do, actually. So the RAM disk deploy, you mean? The what, sorry? The RAM disk deploy interface, pretty much. Exactly. I, you know, if, if I could start completely over, I'd probably focus on KXAC and RAM disks. Um, I guess the problem is at some point someone's gonna would have gone, I need my this disk image, or I need this file system created on disk. I need this special configuration done and demanded that we do it. Because VMs have images. So right. yeah. I do like we're we're seeing some use of the RAM disk interface, even though like building RAM disks is kind of a, a magical art that people don't really grasp or have common knowledge of unless they've really done it more than once. Yeah, we have a use case for the RAM disk deploy interface now because but for Metal Cube they're trying to use a separate ISO for deploying essentially. And so just make a running fire up this ISO. It's magic, magic, magic then have a vendor pass through call to disconnect the ISO and you leave it there as active. That could work. It should work. We don't have this vendor pass through for disconnecting ISOs. It shouldn't be a blocker really. I mean we if we have virtual we do ram this boot maybe we should have, have a cleanup periodic. What do you mean? Like, Maybe we should have a cleanup periodic that runs every so often. And if the deploy was X amount of time ago, go ahead and detach it. Oh, some people may actually use this ISO as the one and only thing. Mm. So constantly accessing the ISO, you mean? Yeah, I mean, just running some smart software for me too. I mean, the initial use case for oh, HPC okay. people. Connect yes, an yes. ISO, yeah, yeah, start yeah. some simulation. I, yeah, I have that in uh, in mind, um, unfortunately. 
unfortunately. Oh no. Okay, we've got we've got a couple more people that have joined. Um, and we've already kind of started rambling into the topic, which is actually kind of awesome. And end in a completely different direction. Because I actually spoke of kegs back. And yeah. <laughs> so I guess the next question is, uh, what would you omit completely today? And I think Dimitri already answered ice as a deploy. I think I'll second that. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't know. There's no J or Jim here, right? I can say that. Maybe I would admit having an agent completely and just use the Ansible deploy. If I was to start Ironic today, I would probably just do the Ansible deploy and the RAM disk deploy. Kickstart, maybe. I've kind of been surprised how few people want to use Ansible and how few people want to actually leverage it because it's not, it's not a perfectly canned solution for all things or for all possible cases that can be encountered. You have to know your scenario basically. And it's just been really surprising. Right. It's a good compromise between uh, all the new in terms of deployment, uh, you need you need to. I mean, I expect from from my point of view, I expect uh, when you do a deployment that someone should know their infrastructure or what they want to achieve in advance. And so, using Ansible and having some kind of pre-configuration and knowledge about that, well, they feel kind of comfortable using a modern tool with some kind of old uh, way. Uh, to do a deployment. I, I, I think kind of that because there's part of our user base is virtualization compute based, they're so abstracted, they don't really know that much about the hardware. So they can't really assert a bunch of different things. So we do, we do a really good job with the agent of trying to do the right thing and trying to go down the path required. with what we have. And a lot of times the images are not perfect. They're like in some cases they may not, they may be broken completely. And we kind of make it all work, which is kind of awesome at the same time. So, but I don't think that's something, I don't think you could take different images like we do with virtualization, throw it at the RAM interface and just expect it to work. You'd have to know, you'd have to have your trusted known good, this works in this hardware image, which is a much higher, level of, I guess, barrier to entry. So uh, operators, do we have operators this morning? Maybe one? Not many. It seems that we have a smaller session on Monday. Oh, well. Yeah, I guess I'm, my point against agent, and oh, that's a pretty weak point. Well, actually, two points is memory consumption and the problematics of building it, all those mechanics around building, rebuilding, and this stuff. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not suggesting to deprecate that. It's just you know speculating. Yeah. Why James not listening? I I think it it becomes a thing of you're trying to just push the problem around or the the area overhead or work or around the the plate in a sense at that point. But I mean, see, each each case has it has its valid use cases. It's just we can't support everything with with. The agent and the 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 Ansible is not support everything the agent does, at least out of the box. So, and I guess it, in a sense, it is kind of a good all-in-one because we have inspection built in.
So image types, uh, we had one vote for partition images, two for whole disk images, no one vote for anything else. And there was a question about growing images. And then also we get went to everyone uses, or most everyone seems to still use legacy boot and starting to go to Eufy. Yeah, funny enough, the cloud images are pretty much whole disk images that can can be used with Ironic. I personally mm -hmm. use CentOS image just to, the way I download it from cloud CentOS work. Yeah, and most of most of the cloud images do just work, and they usually dual boot. Usually, I think I know CentOS six didn't UV boot. But I, I, I know more recent images, at least it's always been dual booting. It always just generally just works. And yeah. I know we've had some operators express interest in like a, a TGZ based image, but I guess TAR now does correctly call, uh, identify and preserve um, character devices. So it doesn't actually read the contents off the device. So it seems it actually seems feasible. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Dimitri does. Yeah. I guess nobody cares enough to just push this work through. Yeah. Run to Houston, then Mirant just happened. Yeah. I really like their idea about torrent based deployment. Quite sad they didn't have enough time to push that through. That was interesting. Yeah, that's true. Maybe I should add, we've got users that actually quite like the tar, would like to do the tar thing, but with rsync in particular, to do the delta. Is that satisfiable with an Ansible playbook? I've not tried. Oh. Should be. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it plausibly should be, right? I, I think, the, well, the idea is, is that you do it uh, with minimal data going across the network. So you don't want to just download the tarball and then do rsync. You want to rsync from the kind of, if you could mount NFS and then rsync that. But again, that should be doable in the same way. Yeah, that should absolutely be doable over uh, an Ansible playbook. In that kind of scenario, it's a completely different thing. So that it, it's the perfect use case for the Ansible deploy interface. I don't, I don't know. Um, are there, if you were using stuff like what's it called, uh, ZFS, you, you could probably do snapshots live, couldn't you? That way, ZFS or BetterFS, they both separate snapshots. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could do the snapshot and extract. Yeah, I, f I always forget about Butter. I guess that would work, wouldn't it? I mean, you could, you could even snap other file systems that aren't knowledgeable of it and if there's LVM in use. Yeah, that's true. You can go underneath, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I had I had a backup system once designed around snapshotting the big massive database and bringing the database back online and then copying the database files out from under it off the snapshot. The fun of 1.6 ter terabyte uh, full text databases. <laughs> well, I'm glad you tested it for us. That's good. <laughs> uh, it does work pretty good. You just need enough disk space uh, in the uh, volume pool to account for Delta. 
I think in three years of operation, we only, on that backup job, we only had it die twice because someone, a DBA went and rebuilt or we did large updates to oh, database that so actually. You ended up with... Yeah. Um, and that just caused the database, back, the backup job to fail. See if our LVM did the right thing and made our snapshot worthless and pointless and dead. <laughs> Oh. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that option till um, we just started talking about this stuff, but that sounds kind of promising. So we talked about, we talked about kind of like images and ways. Uh, boot modes, any more discussion there? Specific hardware limitations, uh, UP, legacy boot. Is anyone trying to like turn secure boot on? Maybe we need to add that as a feature in Ironic. I'm actually trying to do that. I mean, I think it's a feature not to Ironic. Or I mean, turning it on from Ironic side. Yeah. Uh, ILO and RMC, I think, can do that. So yeah. the secure boot capability. We should implement it for Redfish. It should be doable too. Changing keys, I think, is doable through Redfish I, as well. It not on all BMCs, it looks like. At oh, least. Obviously, it's Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it might be doable. That's actually probably something we should try and discuss this next week because. I kind of, since get, people are suddenly rushing towards UP, I feel like they're suddenly going to go, I need secure boot by default. And we're all going to go, oh no. <laughs> That's what happened to me downstream. <laughs> oh. No good. So, looking at source code, yeah. The different RMC code the checks for secure boot is requested. Yeah, they have a call to set secure boot mode. In ILO, they also have some update secure boot mode. So we have a prior work on, on that in Ironic. I think we should do that for Redfish. I'll follow a story. Uh, I guess Redfish should probably go ahead and make have generic methods that wrap that stuff at the interface level. We may even have them. Yeah, double check. Yeah, I mean, just kind of drive that consistency and go from there. Is this about turning it on? Is that, because I'm sure Pierre had this, had secure boot working with Bifrost, but it was kind of turned on outside, I guess. Yeah, it, it'd be about, in my, in my mind, it'd be about turning on secure boot so that it is running on these machines or able to be toggled on these machines based upon. It, yeah, the control. Okay, got you. Something. And it might be, oh, your flavor defines it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think that that's the continuation of uh, secure boot from the original pattern. So I'm going to make a note. Does anyone have any thoughts if I were to go ahead and request more PTG time for next week? Probably makes sense. We already have a full schedule and yeah. topics keep popping up. Yeah. So let's see, we talked about partitioning. People want uh, highly customizable partitioning as well. Uh, architectures. We did talk about that, and I also talked about ARM in another session uh, this week. Um, there seems to be a lot of interest to start getting unit tests, unit tests running uh, on ARM hardware in addition to x86 hardware, and fundamentally because the end results and some of the defaults that you end up with are different on ARM. And because we've hard coded x86 patterns and x86 binaries and tools in the source code, 
And it's not just us, it's all the projects have done this. So we should probably expect to see some of that. And I don't think it'd be hard for us to have an integration job at some point on ARM if the uh, pool of machines at Lenaro are reliable and available. Oh, unit is a good start. I think there was already a template in project config to just add them. Yeah, I, I, I did mention that I know uh, in our case, the only thing I knew that was blocking us was that we need an IPixie binary and we could always add the code to do the cross compile on demand <laughs> for ARM since there's no one builds it for ARM. It's doable. It might just be someone cursing CI for a week though. Um, Sorry, uh, just a wild idea because you like wild ideas. Uh, do we plan on deprecating MBR support? Uh, um, no, <laughs> no. It was a short discussion. Can we, can we change the default? Yeah. Yeah, let's change the default. It's by default. Yeah, let's change the default. <laughs> I thought we changed the default. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, uh, are these additional items that are showing up on our partitions, LVM, ButterFS, and ZFS, are they all coming with Laker support? Ah, oh, well. <laughs> yes. It's fine. If you, if you don't know, the Fedora has switched to ButterFS by default as a partitioning schema. So not just as a file system, but oh. as a way to partition the hard disk because it has partitions, believe me or not. Um, so this idea is crazy, but it's not as crazy as it may sound initially. I always want to type butter FS out. <laughs> So that's, that's really interesting. Um, the one concern I'd have is if we move away from supporting things, well, Windows would support like GPT, uh, we would make ourselves incompatible, potentially. Um, we are very Linux focused though. So maybe, it, maybe I don't, I don't see problem if, a problem if we were to carry code to handle BTRFS partitioning as well. I just don't think it could ever be the default. Yeah, I don't think either. And honestly, with no actual operator interest, probably it's premature. It's probably something to consider. Um, Maybe actually doing LVM by default would be more interesting. What is that allowing doing, you know, the same thing, but with LVM, not like anything fancy, but partition, uh, a partition image with partitioning, but with LVM, that, that may bring some value. Maybe. maybe. Um, although I think, I think one of the problem, problems we're gonna run into is uh, Partition file system images not and RAM just not having the appropriate things for LVM. And I think our downstream QA found such an issue on whole disk images coming out dip yesterday. So yeah. The skim image builder is honestly another discussion topic because it's a cool project, but it's pretty much on life support, in my opinion. I think it's in life. Oh, well, we should probably discuss why. Let's add an item, disk image builder towards the end. 
because there's okay. Ian and this guy who, whose name I never remember, who is pretty new to that, and they're just best things. The two of them, and then infra people who approve pages on demand. Yeah, and you know, people like us that come. Ah, why did you do this? When we finally have the cycles to focus in on the problem and find it, and yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think fixed, it, fixed three bucks this cycle in deep or something. Yeah, the the one that they identified and pretty much like it's not an ironic bug. It's not a bug in our provisioning process. It's the fact the thing doesn't know what to do with itself. <laughs> That's not anything we could fix. Right. So it's like with software rate. We expect the operating system to understand software rate. Yeah, true. Very true. Okay. Um, so we talked about, briefly talked about architectures uh, before we move on. They, there was mention of power or PPC LE64 or 64 LE. Uh, I did offer to email Hugh Blemings at the Open Power Foundation to see if there are any thoughts or ideas about maybe seeing if there's some way somehow some sort of power CI could be built that is independent of power KVM. But power KVM still runs. So it's just it, the projects it reports to are less because it, it's like for Ironic, it broke and they haven't had time to fix it. So. Uh, RAID, we talked about RAID briefly, interest with RAID. We started talking about RAMDIS deploy again. Someone asked about tempfs usage. And then we got to this interesting, in, are there interest in these ideas? Or am I moving too fast through the etherpad? I think it's okay. I hope that people can just speak up if they want. Um, there are lots of plus ones on... about RAID. Go ahead. I, in, this is more just a question. It's something I was banging my head against. Um, I think specifically this was uh, ILO hardware RAID to be quite specific. It was to do with secure arrays because the disk supports secure arrays, but the RAIDed volume isn't secure erasable, I which is kind of a pain because you basically have to break apart the RAID, secure erase the disks, and then put them back together again in the hope that's quicker than putting zeros everywhere. I, I'm just wondering if it's just me or I pressed the wrong button or I haven't bought enough license. No, I it's like it's sure license. If I remember well, uh, it was exactly like that. You need to break the RAID and then clean the disks and rebuild the RAID. Okay. You cannot just yeah, I, I got the impression if I paid enough money to the right people, got a license, they might do something magical. But the, uh, I can help, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I, I'm just glad it's not just me. So you know, that's nice. So they they did add. Um, I think they added a feature, a clean step to help do that. For the iOS five specifically with update firmware. Talking about total erasing? No, there's a different there was a different one that I proposed. Oh, okay. Total races, I, I'm decommissioning the hardware, I'm never gonna see it again. Yeah. I mean this was relatively this is quite modern hardware that was still the same. Or it was still the same unless you fed it an expensive license, I think is my memory of it. Uh, and it could still be that there's a license required. Yeah. Okay. The fun of computers. Yeah, it's grim. Software raid for the win. <laughs> um, but anyway, there we briefly talked about partitioning. We just talked about secure race. Some interesting kickstart deploy, and that's currently a spec. There's from the prior session. There's a question of LVM, and we just talked about LVM. Yeah, it was also from me, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was the same idea I just voiced a few minutes ago. Ah. I mean, is it something you feel so strongly about that we should discuss, or is it just an idea you're throwing out there? 
Well, I don't feel particularly strong about that, but I think if somebody ever has some time, it may be like a good checkbox to check. Like do you support LVM? Okay, we have these basics. We can talk to you about, you know, how to make it more of it. But I, I don't volunteer to writing, let's be honest. Well, I, you, someone just raised a point. If it would help snapshot plans and if we had long running agents inside the OS, then yes, it would absolutely help with snapshotting, which could be as someone's typing or no, it was a different line. Someone's typing the Kickstarter would be awesome, but I think uh, snapshot in the running OS would be awesome as well. It just, people would have to understand that they wouldn't get all their file system or we'd have to make it tunable. It, there's, um, for what it's worth, that there's almost an equivalent in Nova with the QMU guest agent where it kind of says, if the agent's present, turn some features on and off in a different way. I'm not massive fans of persistent in-host agents, but I'm massive fans of in-place snapshots. So, you know, maybe I have to suck one of them. <laughs> oh, we can still boot into the RAM disk, make a snapshot, or mouse the file system to make a snapshot. True. Search it. Yeah, it really so makes that, it optional, doesn't it? I guess, apart yeah. from that weird API problem. But the the conundrum with trying to with doing the snapshot is: do we delete the snapshot, or do we? And what happens to the snapshot basically? Uh, do we keep stay in RAM disk and extract the data, or do we go into a running state and extract the data, or do we just do it within the OS and extract the data, or not? I mean. Yeah, I guess there's two things, aren't there? There, because I really like the idea of crash consistent snapshots going into Glance, just because it's so consistent with VMs and it's kind of <laughs> what people are used to. Um, but it seems wrong not to have the feature where it's a proper shutdown and image the machine into Glance, right? Uh, I'm talking of the non-standalone case, of course. I'm typing basically what you just said. Why does it also seem wrong not to shut the machine down? Um, Is it just file system consistency? Yeah, it's, it's that crash consistent thing. It's. Because as soon as you start going down this line, you then start talking about the um, oh, what's it? the QS stuff. Because you can try and QS the file system while you take the in concert with taking the snapshot, right? Which is theoretically possible here. Yeah, I mean it, it is, but if we try and do it in house, then we run we run into a lot of risks. And I know there are database platforms that. Sorry, the quirky overlords demanding attention and to be let out. Um, I know they're here. What was that? Bring them here. This is your king. You know. <laughs> uh, the quirky overlord. Hey, quirky overlord. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, hey. hey. Okay, so he's going out now. Uh, where were we? Shutting machines people, up or not? Yeah, people are still typing on Anaconda, uh, Anaconda stuff. Um, yeah, we'll get back to it afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, I know there's some database platforms that use shared memory mapping and they don't clean and purge out uh, unless you totally shut everything down. So. You can't actually snapshot the system and expect it to work. Yeah, no, I, that's, I think it's a very valid concern. It, it, I think if we did snapshot without the ability to do a, well, I suppose you can just power the machine off, can't you? If the machine's in the power off state and you do snapshot, you just do it the other way. Well, we'd have to 
gracefully shuts the machine down. But what I mean is, is if, if you do snapshot when it is in a powered off state, having it, if it has been gracefully shut down. Yeah, you could bring it back up and then start extracting the data once it's rebooted. Do it as a, I mean, <laughs> we've maybe given ourselves another excuse for KXEC, but. Um, maybe. But at the same time, we've probably also just, we, we, we are now in the, in, if we can meet back in Dublin at some point and just start drawing on the glass walls, <laughs> we might fill one of those glass walls <laughs> with the workflows that could be. Although, this is a random idea. The first, that might be an easy first step for snapshot. If you just require that it's in the powered off state for snapshot to work and just send a 409 conflict for everything else, that would, that would work. Yeah. That actually would work really well. That would require that the operator has done something or knows how to, has considered the fact that they have to turn it off. Yeah, I mean, but that's better than not having any support. Because it, I think from like the particular use cases I'm thinking about, well, what are they? It's really just creating an image for a cluster, right? So if I just take an arbitrary node, power it off, and call snapshot, um, I just call success on that, really. Yeah. Don't know why I haven't thought of that before. That could work. That could be useful. Could be. So we briefly talked about uh, Anaconda again, I think. Did we? Maybe? Maybe? No? Yes? Yeah, there was a short exchange here. I'm not sure who is green. I'm green. I'm young. Um, yeah. Yeah, not a user of Ironic, just more or less trying to figure out the deltas to adopt Ironic. So your concern is that kickstart scripts will be different from whatever you're using right now, right? Yeah, so the, 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 the trick comes in that if you have legacy kickstart scripts, there's an immense hesitance to modify them because they're, they're kind of tied to a OS plus a machine configuration. Uh, so yeah, technical debt in other words. So I, I, if I remember how the, that works specifically, um, that could be a good case for just doing something around the RAM just deploy. The, the conundrum, I guess, is there's never work. There's unlikely to ever be a really clean way to ask Nova to give you a, a, a bare metal machine that, that was fired up with this kickstart file you just provided, unless we figure out the delineation, how to identify the differences and when to do those things. That being said, it's probably good to go make such comments on the spec as, hey, this is, some, this is an aspect that needs to be considered uh, from our operational experience because it's something we have to deal with and think of. So Richard, I didn't quite get your comment on not being able to request from Nova. I think the spec proposes that kickstart file can be passed through image metadata. No, I what, what I, no, what? Yay. Um, sorry. What I'm saying is if we have another case where we need a slightly different kickstart behavior, then we need to probably, uh, we probably won't be able to support it in the same exact path using Nova, or we'd have to somehow identify that we need to have different logic and ironic to handle it slightly differently. You mean per node? Yeah, or, or per kickstart files, what it sounds like. I mean, a, a, a broken kickstart file, for example, will, will time out because it will, will never inform Ironic that it's successful. I think it's the current proposal that will end up as a timeout. Mm. We can, of course, have a flag just, you know, assume success uh, always, but that's I risky. I thought that uh, the Anaconda stuff, if it knew that there was an error, 
would um, indicate that to Ironics at one time out. Well, if there's an error, then... I could be wrong. But if it's still spinning away there and Ironic doesn't know what's going on, yes, it'll time out. Okay. Um... Well, another way is just assume success. Is there any reason why um, Ironic can't just um, say, well, this node is now, this node is, is, is under a kickstart. Um, we don't have any success feedback um, at all, just. So it's interesting it's you mentioned that. It's, that's the exact behavior of the Rambus deploy interface. Uh, we boot and we just assume it works because we have no way of knowing. I guess this mode has a right to exist even in an Anaconda deploy. I'm not sure we should do it by default. I'm pretty open to have this as an option. Just you know, assume success with Kickstart deploy as long as you manage to start it and you're done. Yeah, as long as we didn't raise an exception on t turning the power on, we're probably okay. Yeah, at least I have an option where you can say, uh, basically, this is a blind deploy. We, um, we're we assuming that uh, external polling is going uh, is gonna to check the health of the machine later. Yeah, that's a useful comment to make to the spec if you could do that, because post on there. I think we want to be more sec secure, more robust by default, but as an option, I think it's cool to have. Yeah, uh, well, th that at least gives you the option that you can use unmodified kickstart images if you're confident that you can do tooling outside. So, anyway, uh, what else? Do you want to talk about dip for a few minutes? So um, as to snapshotting, I can throw a crazy idea that I mentioned on the spec and I think I frightened KFM too much of that. So what he currently describes, so this booting IPA, I'm, I'm not taking the in, in instance agent, uh, uh, agents into account right now, booting IPA, snapshotting, sending back. The whole mechanics around that sounds a lot like rescue. Even more, it sounds like the update steps or active steps, which we are planning on. So I was like, Shouldn't snapshotting be implemented through update steps? And there was silence after that, which maybe may mean that I'm crazy. It, the, the, here's the conundrum. Um, it probably could be articulated that way, but because we're throwing out an, a nebulous future feature or a nebulous feature that is not clearly defined and already in development, he is blocked and effectively cannot contribute code he's already written. Yeah, that's a problem. On the other so, hand, we're going to have another du duplication of the same code. Uh, I think we'll have a duplication regardless. It's just we have to figure out where the happy path is. And without getting people to upload code and participate in the community actively with the things we're working on downstream, we, we end up in a situation where if we, we don't actually make the progress they feel we need to feel Part, as if they're part of the community. That makes sense. It makes, yeah. I just... it, it's not, it, it's a definitely a conundrum because as engineers that care about a project, we're focused on its success and taking the right path and not building too much technical debt and not just shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah. And it, it's, a, it's a big ask when someone comes along saying, I want code dump. <laughs> it's not fun. Right. So no. I feel it for him. I also, I remember my last refactoring of the steps code and adding yeah. another dimension to it sounds scary to me. Yeah, it, it may also be that he's got something elegant. There's no way of knowing until the code, we see the code. Right. So I didn't block the spec. I think I was just kind of like a comment. Yeah. So I thought it, about this. Yeah. Well, we're functionally at time, but I want to talk about this image builder briefly. 
Absolut. Um, so I agree that we're facing a situation where Disk Image Builder is an open stack centric tool that is barely being maintained uh, because it's built around a specific use case or has evolved to be a specific use case. I don't know how we fix this. So multiple times we had to actually intervene to maintain some parts of this image builder ourselves. And maybe it could be, a, I don't know, something that, I know that <laughs> it takes resources, but it's something that we could think about or yeah, and it's not even about like writing a lot of code because the project works. No, no, exactly. It's so, just small corrections. I mean, yeah. Maybe we should help them define, for example, the CI testing metrics better so that it matches what people are trying to do rather than that what they presume people are trying to do. That, that seems like what we should do then is we should, we should schedule a call or meeting or something with them and actually try and talk through some of the issues and, uh, Maybe see if we can find a happy happy path forward uh, to improve testing, and maybe sure. improve that feedback loop. Right, and how we can help because we are relying yeah. on it quite substantially. Yeah, true. I suspect they'd appreciate that. Who's um, uh, except like besides us in terms of Ironic project? Uh, who else is using this image builder directly in the OpenStack community? Like and infra. Yeah. Okay. Node pool. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. I honestly don't know how other people build a disk images. Um, the only comparable tool I've ever seen was a web interface from SUSE that told you you could download your images in 30 minutes. Okay. And you can use guest fish as people sometimes propose. If you have a good base image, I mean. Yeah. It, it's always the best, but yeah, if in a crunch, it, it, it works. Strangely enough, I was uh, looking up how um, the CentOS uh, disk images or CentOS cloud images get generated. They get generated via Kickstart. Right. Oh, I think Arne mentioned yesterday that they're creating images by installing an operating system in a VM and just taking this VM disk. That is exactly what they do. It's 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 pretty weird. Yeah, and I think actually uh, Arnie mentioned the same thing occurs at CERN. So. Yeah, it's actually a common practice. It happened as well in my former company. Yeah, I I've done it as well. I mean, I I've built OS images that way many many times. So yeah. I'm using this fish for my purposes. <laughs> There are positives and negatives to it. Anyway, everyone, thank you. And uh, I guess we'll talk again soon, hopefully next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.